Hello everyone and welcome to our daily prayer on Friday. Today is the day that the Church of England recognises Ignatius of Loyola. He was a man of deep faith. But let me tell you more about him. Here's a brief outline. He was born in, in 1491 in the Basque region of Spain. As a young man, he became a soldier and received a terrible injury when his leg was shattered by a cannonball. While convalescing, he underwent a conversion. Reading the lives of Jesus and the saints inspired him and awakened desires to do great things. Ignatius realised that these feelings were clues to God's direction for him, for a different way of life altogether. So when he was restored to health, he headed for the monastery at Montserrat to pray and to begin his new life. During this time, Ignatius describes God as teaching him as if he was a child, receiving deep insights into his faith, which he recorded in a notebook and his interest in spiritual conversation began to grow. And he soon became recognised for his spiritual wisdom, sharing his insights from his notebook with others, all the time refining his notes. Over the years, he travelled and built up friendships, studied and developed his notes into a series of spiritual exercises. And later he was joined by others, eventually forming a religious order which came to be known as the Society of Jesus. We know it probably better as the Jesuits. Ignatius' spiritual exercises form the foundational guidelines for the Jesuits to this day. And they can be used by all sorts of people to deepen their faith. The Jesuits went on to spread the word of God throughout the world Notably, one of them was Francis Xavier, who went to Japan, and his uh, steadfastness in faith was partly, I'm sure, due to his spiritual exercises. You can look a lot more. There's a lot more about him online that you can find, and, um, and if you like, you can... Go and do the spiritual exercises or follow the first one, the few ones that I've put online on our, on our parish website. So our prayer for today begins on page 173. Our psalm is Psalm 19, which is on page 673. And our intercessions are on page 376. Our reading will be Luke 22, 54 to the end. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever, as your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your, your presence and strengthen our hands to do your work. That the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and one mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our psalm, it's quite a long one today. Psalm 19 on page 673. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to his eyes, to the eyes. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament pro proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another and one night unfolds knowledge to another. 
They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all the land, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the law are right and rejoice the heart, and the commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter than honey, dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins lest they get dominion over me, so I shall be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Let's pray. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, rise in our hearts this day, Enfold us in the brightness of your love and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon. For your love's sake. Amen. And our scripture reading, as I say, is Luke chapter 22, verses 54 to the end. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had set down to get, sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, replied Peter. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the cock crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking him and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, demanded prophesy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? He replied, you are right in saying I am. Then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Ignatius then developed his spiritual exercises to help him and to help others come closer to God. 
They generally required reading a passage of scripture, as we have just done, and following it by prayer, during which they were asked to be shown what it is God wants us to take from the passage. Very often we are asked to put ourselves into the story. That is, to imagine which character in the story we relate to best. And this can be quite enlightening. For instance, in this passage, we have Peter denying Christ, Christ himself standing firm, but quiet, and the accusers and mockers trying to trap him. Where would we see ourselves in this? We ask ourselves, would we capitulate under pressure from the mockers? Would we join in with the mockers? Or would we be able to stand firm with Christ? I suspect many of us would capitulate, though we would try hard to stand firm. Or we, or we would join the mockers. And you see, this has huge importance for us today. In a society which often intellectually dismisses our faith, we need to train ourselves to stand firm and the spiritual exercises help us to do that. In the same way that they helped the early Jesuit missionaries to stand firm in the faith and spread the love of God around the world as they did. In fact as I said Francis Xavier went to Japan where the, the early Christians there were tortured and killed. So it was important, and it's still important, that we're able to stand up for our faith. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. Oh, forsake me not, O Lord, but be not far from me, O my God. So the Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus. Give to your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you go, will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet in the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. So our prayers on page 376. Let us, pray, let us by prayer and intercession with thanksgiving make our request to God. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. 
We pray for the honouring of human rights and for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of men, women and children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the renewal of church in faith, love and service. We pray for Stephen and Dagmar, our bishops, and for the life of this, this benefits and these communities. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of the sacraments and the fellowship of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the local communities, for all the people in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and for the elderly, for families and all who are alone. We give thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your loveliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful and the bereaved. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for the human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Heavenly Father, as we come back to something like normal in our church services and our worship, we ask that you would bless us, that you would make us compassionate about others' wishes and wills, and that you would help us all work together to praise you in the best way that we possibly can at this very difficult time. We ask that you would bless Phil and all the ministry team in their work in this difficult job of treading a fine line in getting things back together. We ask, Lord, that it won't be long before we can be meeting together in our churches as normal. But Lord, we ask for each of us to consider the others as we move towards this time, to consider that some of us are old, some of us are vulnerable, and some of us are frightened. Lord, bless us. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And a collect for Saint for Ignatius Loyola. It's I'm sure it's one that you will probably know, so please say it along with me if you do. Teach us, good Lord to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now as Jesus taught us, we'll pray Please use whichever words you prefer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we, sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today and... Uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Hopefully we'll see you over the weekend or in one of the many services that we'll be having this month. 
I look forward to that. In the meantime, keep yourself safe and have a blessed time. Thank you.